Two decades ago, the latest owner and CEO of Twitter, Elon Musk, founded SpaceX, a rocket company to someday send people to Mars. And he has said for years that he will make space travel as easy as hopping on a plane. As he stood in front of a gleaming steel spaceship, it was tempting to start believing him. It's really going to be pretty epic to see that thing take off and come back, Musk said. But that's the hypnotic nature of such showcases. The flashiness of the affair, the giddy confidence of the host. These can almost elide the unspoken hitch here that building an interplanetary spaceship is really, really difficult. Could Starship be a big mistake? Let's see what famous scientists and engineers have said about that very subject. Starship, which is being built at a Texas site dubbed Star Base, consists of a giant spaceship on top of a large booster known as Super Heavy. Both can land back on Earth so they can be reused, reducing cost. The entire vehicle is capable of lifting 100 metric tons or 220,000 pounds of cargo and people into space on a regular low-cost mission. The volume of usable space within Starship is a whopping 1,000 cubic meters. That's big enough to fit in the entire Eiffel Tower disassembled. For most, this massive size is admirable. However, the Mars Society president and aerospace engineer Dr. Robert Zerbin said that a problem with Starship is that because it's so massive, it takes a great deal of facilities to be able to refuel it. So I anticipate that the few Starships that first land on Mars will stay on Mars. To begin the Mars colonization effort, the rocket company's mission would be to deliver a massive amount of cargo, including vital equipment to Mars, and possibly robots with capability to set everything up before the first human arrives. Part of the first deliveries to Mars could include supplies like power generators, large batteries and solar panels that would aid to build and power a propellant plant to refuel Starship, so it could eventually come back to Earth. Zerbin pointed out that would take six to ten football fields of solar panels, and that's just enough to refuel Starship within a 500-day stay on Mars. Starship is capable of carrying 100 passengers plus 100 tons of cargo. Zerbin believes the first missions will not transport 100 passengers, that a crew of about 20 astronauts to set everything up is safer to prepare for future arrivals of over 50 people. Zerbin says building a mini version of Starship to send to Mars has a better advantage to sending it and bringing it back to Earth. It would have a tremendous advantage for an exploration architecture because it wouldn't need a big base in order to refuel and come back. He, Musk, was adverse to that. He feels that developing one thing is much better than developing two things. But Zerbin believes SpaceX is capable of building both versions of the Starship, a full scale and a mini, especially seeing how quickly they develop things. Besides, he explained that landing a starship on Mars will have some issues. Zerbin believes landing a starship on the moon will not work because it will have a gigantic plume upon landing and it would blow a crater, he says. It wouldn't land. It will dig a crater and fall over, explaining that both the moon and Mars need to have landing pads built beforehand to land a massive vehicle such as Starship so they can take the plume of the starship. On Mars is a bit of a less problem, but it's still a major problem. If that can't be resolved, then he may be forced to go to the mini starship route. Zerbin further stated, in order to land a starship on the moon, someone has to go there first and build a landing pad, so it's not blowing debris all over the place and building a crater to fall into. That's not good architecture. It just isn't. Zerbin believes there's also other issues with the Starship architecture. For instance, the Starship is a stainless steel hull and he can do the entry from Earth orbit from that because it's a low ballistic coefficient which reduces the heat load. So he can do this with a steel ship without heat resistant tiles or anything of this sort. But coming back from Mars is a much higher heat load than coming back from LEO. So he has to make specialized Starships that are reinforced thermal protection adding that Earth-to-Earth -Earth version of starships would work. Surface-to-surface -surface transportation is great. Besides, the famous Professor Brian Cox also doubts starship abilities. Musk said manned missions would happen by 2029 on Starship, but Cox doesn't see that as plausible. SpaceX is a remarkable company. They did do something astonishing, which is transforming the economics of spaceflight. You never know with them. They're really good engineers, but my guess is Musk's prediction is optimistic. Professor Cox said he'd also not go to Mars tomorrow, even if SpaceX technology existed. 
I'd be surprised to see anyone there before the 2040s at the earliest, although I'd love to be wrong, he said. I think it's even more difficult than going to the moon was in the 60s. Apollo was at the edge of our capabilities in the 60s. It was right at the edge of available technology, and I think Mars is perhaps even slightly beyond that at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised if we've started sending the infrastructure within the next 10 years. Well, these doubts are completely understandable as Starship isn't real yet. All eyes will be on the first orbital launch test expected sometime in the coming months. Even if it is a success, no one knows whether SpaceX will be able to achieve its vision of launching the rockets daily and reusing them many times. Also unsettled is whether a market will materialize for a rocket that could put so much into orbit. Gladly, while some scientists are worried about Starship, the majority are in favor. Even world-renowned physicist Dr. Makio Kaku agrees with Musk's opinion. As an insurance policy, we have to make sure that humans become a two-planet species. And now, of course, Elon Musk has revived this vision by talking about a multi-planet species. Even Neil deGrasse Tyson, who calls himself one of SpaceX's biggest critics, also believes that Musk's SpaceX Starship orbit project has more merit and has a higher chance of going beyond orbital flight. The concept of SpaceX is we want to send people to places. It's an effort to push that limit, the frontier of exploring space. Starship could fly bigger and heavier instruments more often and much more cheaply if SpaceX's projections of $10 per kilogram cargo launch cost are to be believed. On Mars, they could deploy rovers not as one-offs, but in herds. Space telescopes could grow and fleets of satellites in low Earth orbit could become commonplace. Astronomy, planetary science, and Earth observation could all boldly go, go better than they ever have before. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. What do you think about Starship? Can we become multi-humanity? Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section because your support, it motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.